Do not change the channel. Why don't you fill us in Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV shows that gave us zero closure. I'm acting on orders from upstairs. I don't know exactly why they had me do the things that they had me do. Guys! And I have to know, because- Know what? There's nothing to know. You never saw me, and uh, everything is perfectly normal. For this list, we'll be looking at some TV shows that were not only cut down before their time, but that left us with way more questions than answers. Due to the nature of this list, a spoiler alert is in effect. What open-ended show are you still upset about? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Flash Forward This show had a pretty exciting premise. It felt more like my consciousness went somewhere else. Like I was having a memory, only it wasn't of the past. It was of the future. The entire population passes out and, while in a dream state, gets a flash of themselves six months in the future. This was enough to get the show a pretty impressive number of viewers for its debut. How many cars collided? We have planes down at LAX. How many more across the country? Unfortunately, the mystery and intrigue weren't enough to keep the audience interested for the long haul. Ratings kept plummeting after that first episode, and the show wasn't able to recover. It was cancelled after just one season, and we never found out what the future really did hold. Major bummer. What is it? You gotta tell me. They found him. Number 9. Constantine NBC probably should have known better than to try and produce a show based on a DC comic book. That's kind of the CW's thing. It's really become a niche for the network, not so much on other channels, and Constantine was cancelled after only 13 episodes. Are you saying you can mess with my life? Well, I got news for you, mate! Thankfully, it wasn't the end for everyone's favorite demon hunter. The character did live on in a few brief appearances in the shows of the Arrowverse. We still wish we could have seen more of his standalone story. Now, I don't know what you and your, uh dishy lot have gotten yourselves into, but I suggest you leave it to the experts." The character was obviously loved enough to bring back occasionally, so maybe the series should have gotten another chance with a second season. I'll see you around, Squire. <coughs> okay, it's cool. Number 8. My So-Called Life This show, like many cancelled before its time, has become a cult classic. Though viewership was never quite the best, there was a small group of loyal and dedicated fans. He must have, like, no life. So neither do you. Unfortunately, even those fans couldn't save it, despite their best efforts. Fans launched Operation Life Support, which was the first ever internet fan campaign organized to save a show. But ultimately, the low ratings outweighed the devotion of the audience. You liked it though, right? It made you like... Happy. The show got the axe after the first season, and we never got to see who Angela picked in the love triangle. How could ABC leave us hanging like that? I, he meant a, a lot to her at a certain time in her life. I mean, it's okay, I can handle it. It's Clearly. Number 7. Moesha. This is a bit of an odd one. Y'all show me some love. <laughs> I said show me some love! Most of the shows on this list are one-and-done burnouts, or shows that powered through their weak viewership for a couple of seasons until it finally caught up with them. But this was a very popular show for a long time. She don't know who I am by now, she better ask somebody, baby! <laughs> it was on the air for five seasons before it faced its fatal dip in ratings in season six. The show ended with a huge pregnancy cliffhanger. Chuck it, duck it, look what I found in the trash! A pregnancy test! Man, now what were you doing in the trash? I was going through it. <laughs> Man, but that's not what is important. What is important is somebody in this room is pregnant. Is it Moesha? Nisi? Maybe it's Alicia who's with child. Guess we'll never know. Supposedly, it was meant to be resolved in the show The Parkers, but it was never brought up again. Number 6. Pitch This was a great show following the day-to-day -day life of the first modern female Major League Baseball player. Are you ready for this? Been ready my whole life. It had such a great premise and a lot of star power, with Kylie Bunbury, Mark Paul Gossler, and Ali Larder as the main characters. It also managed to strongly portray feminism without feeling contrived or gimmicky. I think you're the first teammate to slap my ass to get a laugh from his friends. No. I've played two years winter ball, five years in the minors. I've done stints and how holes you haven't seen in a decade, superstar. You wanna put on a show for your friends? 
Find another scene partner I'm here to pitch. Any questions? Every episode delved into Ginny's struggles, not just as a woman trying to break into a man's sport, but also in trying to balance the weight of being every little girl's role model with simply being herself. And yet it was canceled after one season. This is the strong. point where you stop talking. Gotcha. I've consulted with various people. Right. Of course, none of them was me. The finale ended on a huge cliffhanger, with Ginny injuring her arm in the middle of pitching a no-hitter. Number five, my name is Earl. Much like Moesha, this show was quite successful for several seasons before its untimely cancellation. If we looked surprised, it was because we were. This story follows Earl Hickey, a man who's pretty much wasted his life being a bad person as he tries to right all the wrongs he's done by checking good deeds off of a very comprehensive list. Now how in the world are you gonna fix these things, Earl? I don't know, start with the easy ones, like uh, number 64. Pick on Kenny James. I used to torment the hell out of that poor boy back in elementary school. The series was a bit up and down for four seasons, but just when it looked like the show was really hitting its stride, it got canceled without us ever getting to see Earl finish his list. The creator did give us a bit of insight into Earl's future, revealing that eventually he would cross paths with someone he'd inspired to make their own list. You see this? You didn't win, I won. Me and my friends won. Guess we'll just have to live off that. Number four, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. How could they cancel Superman? He's Superman! And ending on such a big cliffhanger? It honestly felt kind of disrespectful to fans. You know, it doesn't matter how much money you have when your time is up, it's up. Superman has transcended media. Comics, movies, TV shows, you name it. The Man of Steel has been there. What's your secret? And can I have it? In this incarnation, we see not only Clark and Lois save the world one villain at a time, but we see their personal adventures as well. I still can't believe it. We're actually married. Mm. Feels like a dream. The show ends with a baby being randomly left on Lois and Clark's doorstep. They have no idea whose baby it is or where it came from. And then we just never got any answers. We need to know. What happens next time on Superman? <laughs> Number three, Hannibal. Suspense is usually great for a horror thriller TV show, but not when you're anticipating another great season of television that just never comes. You'll see it's not the same. The unspoken knowledge will live with you, like unwanted company in the house. This show about Hannibal Lecter was intensely riveting and kept its small but devoted audience compelled episode after episode. In addition to fan support, this show earned a plethora of awards for its performances and even won several different Best Television Series awards. Sometimes people don't know what they're missing, though. God forbid we become friendly. I don't find you that interesting. You will. It seems absurd that a show frequently regarded as one of the greatest TV series of all time was canceled because of low viewership. Tasteless. Do you have trouble with taste? My thoughts are often not tasty. Number two, Freaks and Geeks. This series was one of the first ever to tell the story from the point of view of the underdog. Most shows around this time were focused on the popular kid, the good student, or the jock. But Freaks and Geeks dared to opt out of wish fulfillment filler and represent a more realistic portrayal of high school for many of us. Man, I hate high school. Unfortunately, the network brass didn't agree with this approach. Paul Feig and Judd Apatow are on record with their refusal to water down the show to please the studio. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? I don't know. What are you gonna do? What happened to Lindsay and Kim on the Grateful Dead tour? Will Lindsay and Nick ever get back together? The finale clearly intended on a future that we never got to see. I'm not some idiot. You told me to move on, and so I did. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Alf, a regrettable decision. That's my luck. I'm a sports fan among you. Southland, an abrupt ending. Let me see your head! The Secret Circle, a magical cliffhanger. Reaper, a devil of a deal. Look, I'm not exactly pleased with the way things turned out either, but I just, hey, ow, ow, 
Wow! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pushing Daisies What a beautiful, offbeat wonder of a show. It became an instant cult classic among fans. I just thought my world would be a better place if you were in it. Pushing Daisies was witty and original and won a litany of awards. Watching Ned and Chuck fall more and more in love each episode, despite Ned's unfortunate superpower to make things dead, was a beautiful tragedy every single week. What do you need to be happy? Though the show had a loyal and dedicated following, it suffered from a heavy drop in viewership and was cancelled after only two seasons. And we never got to see what ultimately happened between Ned and Chuck. Honestly, we're still rooting for them. Am I a hurricane? A little bit, but I, uh, I like the weather. Mm. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.